Okay, last time we learned about the special properties of the normal curve. And we found out that it's because of its shape we can find the proportion between any two locations. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that was great, and it has lots of applications we'll continue to talk about. But what happens if we aren't exactly one step up, two steps up, three? So remember, empirical rule is one up and one down, two up and two down, three up and three down. Each of those had special proportions. Well, what if we're not exactly on one of those steps? What are we going to do? Well, what we need is the area underneath the curve. We did some uniform distributions last time, and that was easy, because if we have a uniform distribution, we can find the area underneath there just using geometry. That's simple, because it makes a rectangle or a square, something very simple. But this is different. This is not um, such a nice shape. Actually, the, the equation that makes this curved line is quite difficult. So what are we going to do to try to find that proportion? Well, the secret is in calculus. If you remember calculus, if you've had calculus, there are two main ideas. One is a derivative and the other is an integral. And an integral is the idea of being able to find the area underneath the curve. It looks something like this. And you would go from one point to another. Well, I don't want to scare you to death here, but we're not going to be doing the calculus, but that's the way that it needs to be done. Now, <clears throat> the problem that we have is this. This is challenging, and we don't want to be doing it. The function is difficult to integrate. Everything is hard about it. And the other problem is that there are 7 million applications of this normal curve. So you would have to do this very difficult math every single time that you had a different situation with a different mean and a different standard deviation. Every time, you'd have to do this math all over again. Well, somebody figured out something very clever, and it has to do with this idea called a standard normal curve. This is the mathematical notation. This just means I'm dealing with a normal curve, and this is the mean, and this is the standard deviation. This is the perfect curve. We consider the mean to be 0, and the standard deviation is exactly 1. It's perfect. Well, what you could do, again, called standard normal curve, what you could do is turn any of these situations, there's a million of them, heights, test scores, whatever, we could convert this onto the perfect normal curve. Well, how do you do that? It's an old friend of ours. If you convert these to z-scores, you are placing them onto the perfect curve. So if you put in, like, somebody's test score was 75, you run it through this formula, you got a z-score of 1.7. Well, they're right here on the perfect curve. And so what, what every textbook does is that they have a table in the back where all the calculus has been done, but it's been done on this perfect standard normal curve, so it doesn't have to be done for every application. So whatever the situation, you convert it over to the perfect curve, and you can look up the area in the back of your textbook. Now, things are even better than that for us because we get to use our calculator. And if you go into remember where we had binomial CDF and binomial PDF for our last exam, you'll see that there's a choice called normal CDF. Now, there's also a normal PDF, but don't use that because what we learned, PDF was at a single location. And what we learned last time is that um, in order to find the area under the curve, you have to have an area. We can't do a si single position. You can't find the probability that x is exactly 1 on a continuous curve. You can't do it. So we're always going to be using CDF. Now, let's suppose, so this is, this notation means that this is the mean. You're working with a normal curve. Here's the mean. Here's the standard deviation. So what you're going to do, let's try to say that we were interested in knowing the proportion of the curve between 72 and 82. Now what you'll see is this is not exactly on those perfect steps. So we have a new problem that we have to solve. So if you select normal CDF, it's going to say lower, but it's just moving left to right. So I often recommend you shade this in. We're going to go from 72 to 82. We're looking for that. 
And so this says lower, depending on you have a table or it went right to the front screen. If it goes right to the front screen, here's what you're doing. Your lower is 72, your upper is 82. So we're starting here and we want to shade up to 82. Then you got to tell it the mean, which this is the mean, 75. And the standard deviation is 5. If you have to, close that off, depending on which version of the calculator you got. And this will tell you the area between those two spots. It's doing the z-score and the calculus, all that stuff for you. But there you go. Now, suppose we wanted the area less than 72. Okay? We wanted, so we could shade that in. Here's 72. We want this. Okay, well, it always goes up the number line. So we are starting here. I like instead of lower, I like to think of it as starting point and stopping point. So we are starting all the way down here. But what would we call that? Well, the bottom of the number line, this we don't show it, but a normal curve actually goes on forever and gets itty bitty tiny on these little tails forever. And so the way we enter that in our calculator is negative infinity which is negative 1, and you have a button. Uh, let's see where it is, if I can find it. It's above the comma. It says EE. -E. You put, press that EE -E button, and it looks where you, it's EE -E on the calculator, but when you press it, it's just going to give you a single E. And then you put 99. This is like, this is an incredibly small negative number, and, or an incredibly large negative number, and this means negative infinity. So here's a negative infinity, this negative 1e e to the 99, and we're going to go on to 72. We're going up the number line, and we tell it the mean, and we tell it the standard deviation. Now, how about if we wanted greater than 82? Well, you might be able to guess this already. So as we're going, we want greater than 82, we want up here. So our starting point is going to be, we're going up the number line, so we're starting at 82 and we're going on forever. So this time we're going to do 82, infinity, so it'll be 1e e to the 99, tell it the mean, tell it the standard deviation, and that will tell you the area of the shaded curve. Okay, I got one more thing for you here, but I'm running out of room. All right, so that's how you do it. You can find any spot now. We don't have to be right on the empirical rule. But there is one other kind of problem that you'll face. And so what will happen in the last one is they say, hey, I got a, a student I want to know between or greater than his score of 85. But sometimes what they'll do is they'll give you the area. So basically they're asking you to work this backwards. They say, okay, you've got 75%. What score had that below it? Well, if you go back into your distribution, there was one other thing that we can use there. It's called inverse norm. And it just inverse is a fancy math language for we're going to go the other way around. So this time we have the area and we want the score that had that below it. So if you had inverse norm, you might have the table, but you tell it the area. And then you just tell it the mean. I don't remember what it was from the other page. I think that's what it was. Tell it the mean and standard deviation, and it will tell you the score that had 75% below it. Now, be careful on the inverse norm, because if it said, hey, what's got the top 5%, some of the new calculators can handle this, um, and if you have one of those, just ask. But the default for the calculator is the area below so if you want the top 5% and you put 0.05 in there, like you think, okay, they gave me 5%, what's the score? That's not right. That would be the bottom 5%. What you need to do is put in the complement. Inverse norm, 0.95, isn't that the complement of the top 5? Because the calculator is always thinking down. Unless you have a fancy new one, you can ask me about that. But it's going to be the top 5% is the same thing as 95 below, right? You see what I'm saying? And you put in the mean and the standard deviation. 